And even then, once you heal, people say, well. Thanks, so for somebody to bail you out then. Yeah. But work. see, you don't, banks don't get bailed out from taking advantage of um, their clients. Uh, Elliot Spitzer came down with banks for basically having analysts that simply acted as part of the sale. And that's what they are, they're part of the sales division. Um, he was, you know, he had a rough time shortly thereafter, but it was not 100% agreement with him. He was absolutely right. What banks get bailed out for is not separating um, proprietary chaining and risky bank uh, hedge fund activities from traditional banking, which is deposit taking. Okay, deposit taking should be just that, plain vanilla, you go give money into a savings account, you get a toast in return. You don't get a credit default swap on a Greek CDO. Okay, when you combine those, then most banks want to do that because deposits are very cheap funded. Okay, when you do that, you then create entities that need to be bailed out. If you could separate them, like Glass-Steagall did, how many banks had to be bailed out before Glass-Steagall was um, not one? Zero. You know why? When the banks took risk, it was their money they were at risk with. Now, I'm not against... Well, they were bailed out privately, though. Well, not by the government. They can be bailed out privately. They want as long as not my money. I could care less. Yeah, I mean, well, the the idea is that what we're doing right now in the public bailouts is uh, fairly similar to the way that the private bailouts worked before. You know, the invention no, of the federal no, reserve system. No, because Wait, the, no, private bail, the private no. bailouts forced everybody to take a haircut, and the taxpayer money was not involved in it. No, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about the bailouts that occurred prior to the invention of the federal reserve <coughs> system, where like they, there was a run in a bank, mm -hmm. and some, usually J.P. Morgan or one of his other, you know, equivalents in that era had so much money that they could just inject liquidity for a temporary period. Once the bank run was over, everything was fine. Nobody even had to take a haircut. And, but and that's the idea that I think the Federal Reserve is trying to use now is that if they give these loans, then um, they can take the place of those private bankers who were doing the bailouts before the Federal Reserve System because of the fact that they think that there's not enough people who are rich enough anymore who could do those bailouts. Like, for example, Warren Buffett essentially <coughs> did a, almost a bailout of Bank of America with his you know, $5 billion preferred purchase. Um, I mean, we could speculate maybe if there was no Federal Reserve, maybe he would be doing more, but maybe he would have been the one to bail out some of these other companies instead of the government. $5 billion is not a bailout of Bank of America. Bank of America is in a hole for trillions. So $5 billion is not even around the era. Um, he took advantage of their need for capital. I feel it was a mistake. Now, I wrote on, if you look at the uh, last couple of interviews I spoke about Bank of America, Bank of America, the countrywide alone is such a negative sinkhole in, from litigation that it should be able to take the whole country down. I'm not country, company. If not, <laughs> then Merrill Lynch should be able to take it down. If not, then Bank of America's actual operations. But um, the back in the um, Depression days, you had the runs were instead were retail driven. People will come and take their money out of the bank. And that created the bank run. That created the insolvency. Right now the Federal Reserve System and FDIC can buffer that. So right now the bank runs we just had a bank run yesterday, which resulted in the eighth largest bankruptcy in the history of this country. Nobody even realized it. MF Global yeah. is a bank run. John Corzin. Right. Yeah. And and you're not going to get to <laughs> how that happened. But the uh, why do you call it bank run then? Then they find a hundred million dollars discrepancy in the book. You no, know, it's because a lot of the people who did business with MF Global pulled liquidity out. Why they not? ran on the bank. When they ran on the bank, it caused the bank to collapse. And that's when they discovered it. No, that's when they went bankrupt. Okay. You know, the discovery of the money is a totally separate issue. Right. It was a old fashioned bank run. The bank runs that are going to happen now, they're happening in France, and they're going to happen in France right. in Syria, like, caused by count institutional counterparties. So because they the FDIC, you know, we've learned our lesson from Great Depression. We put a buffer for retail bank runs, but counterparty is very difficult to buffer because they have uh, the underpinnings of the bank and the liquidity, and you can't sell a counterparty, they can't pull liquidity. Or they don't have to pull liquidity, they just ask for over collateralization, which the bank can't afford, and then you have, in essence, a synthetic bank run. Oh, so you had your hand up for a while. Uh, yes. Um, what do you think the solution to America's economic crisis and unemployment rate? The same as Europe, take your medicine. Swallow your medicine, sooner the better. The longer it takes to swallow it, the more the disease metastasizes. Mm -hmm. Can you be more specific in terms of America specifically? Take, have the banks mark their assets to market, take their losses, have the um, bondholders subordinate it and other, take their losses, um, don't subsidize the investors. Ring okay. fence, anything that's truly systematic, is systemically important. How would that affect unemployment? Well, it affects unemployment by driving asset prices to a point where they're fundamentally sound, and then people start buying things. 
you know, you can buy houses because their houses are affordable. You can invest in the markets without having to worry about 45 point jumps in S&P last week with a 43 point drop this week in one week. Part of that needs to be elimination of a lot of regulation. No, right now, I think if you simply enforce what was on the books, instead of eliminating regulation, I think just enforce what's on the books right now. You know, right now I'm a market-driven guy. Get the market working correctly. As for right now, there's no price discovery anywhere. You can't trust the pricing. You know, people come to me to find out what a company's worth when you should better look at the end report and figure it out. If you can't, then there's no true price discovery. You have experts who are, who are actually creating the prices and they don't know what price discovery is. The quotes that you see on the Greek bonds are simply quotes. They're not true prices because there's nobody on the end buying the bonds. You know, they say this is what we we're going to sell it for. But since nobody's buying it, it's not a true market price. You know, you just have to ask. No bids.